and welcome to today's Wednesday webinar. My name is Tina Salzer, and um, this video is going to be the first in a series of videos on Seesaw and using Seesaw in your classroom. Many of you have probably already heard the term Seesaw and just may not be familiar with what it is. Um, so Seesaw is actually a digital portfolio tool that is, um, there's the free version works just fine, but there's also a paid version. Um, but basically, it's a, a place to collect not only digital artifacts, but physical artifacts as well. Um, for instance, a student could take a picture of an art project that they created, upload it into Seesaw, and record their voice over that art project explaining what it is. It's also a place where a student can create and upload their own artifacts into their portfolio. So the student has ownership of their own portfolio and what goes in there um, and, and knowing that their parents are going to see what's in there. So hopefully it makes them try a little bit harder as well. Um, but it's also a great parent communication tool. Um, you as the teacher can invite the parents to join their student's portfolio um, in your Seesaw class so that when the student uploads an artifact, their parent gets only their feed for what they've uploaded as soon as as soon as the teacher accepts the upload. Um, and it's a great tool to use during conferences for parents um, to go through their students' portfolio with them. Um, and also, it's a great communication tool for the teacher to the parents. Um, say, for instance, at the end of the day, if the teacher posts what the students were working on for the day, um, the parent would get that post on their Seesaw account as well. And if your children are like my daughters, you ask them how their day was and everything was fine and good, but you can't get any details out of them. Well, with this communication tool, the teacher could post what what they were working on for the day and you could follow through on that at home. So let's go ahead and jump into and take a look at Seesaw here. Okay, now let's take a look at Seesaw and some of the things that it has to offer for you and your students. First of all, when I log into my account, I should see, I see my name up here, and then underneath my name, I actually have two classes set up. For me, I have one practice class set up that I have my um, daughters that I practice with, and then I have um, another class that is I use as a training class. Um, you also can see your students right over here in the right-hand side. Um, and this plus sign is where you go add all of the different features. And so I'm going to click on that because I want to show you some of the things that you can upload into Seesaw. First of all, you have the option to upload a photo. Um, you could do a video recording. You could do a drawing. You could upload a file from your computer. You could type in a note, which I use for communicating with parents, um, or you could insert a link. So those are the options you have, and I'm gonna show you what some of those look like here. So as an example, this is a note I typed in that I shared with everyone, which would include the, the student feed as well as the parents. Um, and so basically what this does is it tells the parents what we focused on for the day. Um, and I don't know if your preschooler is like my preschooler, but if I ask her at the end of the day what she did that day or what she learned that day, it's always, I don't know. So this way, the teachers can communicate that with the parents, and the parents get that in their email, and they show that there's an update to the Seesaw class, and they can go in here and read that. And so when the kids get home for that day, you have a talking point, and you can ask your children about what the teacher stated they did for the day. Um, and that is one of the note features that I typed in on a note. Another feature, as I mentioned, is the drawing feature, which I used with my daughter. And basically what she did is I had her recreate a letter and then she drew a picture of something that started with that name and she recorded her voice telling about what that picture was. So I'll let you listen to that here. And so that's a great, great way to use the drawing feature. Um, and here's another letter that she did to practice. And then this example I used with my other daughter, I pulled in a picture or an image, and then I had her tell about the image. What's that? What is it? 
Okay, so that's another way you could use that. And then this example is actually my daughter, she drew a picture, so you could use this for an art project, and she created a video explaining what the art project is or explaining what is in the picture. Can you explain this picture to mommy? Tell me what's all in there. A spot and a silver. And you can get the idea from there. But basically, this is a great way to pull in two-dimensional um, projects or creations that you do within your classroom. Here's another example of how I used the note piece and then had my daughter read the text that I typed in. And I thought a great way that you could use this is um, within parent-teacher conferences, I could have her record her reading this sentence at the beginning of the year, then I could have her record it again at the same sentence at the middle of the year, and then again at the end of the year, so it could show her progress with learning words and learning how to read. So this is an example of the same type of thing. Um, and again, you can pull in images, videos, pictures, um, just about anything you can think of, and then you can apply that to your students' portfolios, which in, at the end of or during parent-teacher conferences, you could share just that student's portfolio. And when you invite the parents, the only item that the parents get is what their children share or what you share with everyone. So that is a good example of some of the things that you can see or how you can use Seesaw in your classroom. Now, to get started with Seesaw, you first have to create a class, um, excuse me, sign up and then create a class. So if you type in seesaw.me, it will take you to this page and so you're going to say sign up free and this is where you're going to tell them that you're a teacher and you put in your first name and your last name. I'm just using um, a make-believe account right now. So you put in your email and um, set your password. Um, and then Seesaw is great at creating and hosting a lot of tutorials to walk you through each step um, as well. So as soon as you get in there, it's going to ask you to create a class name. And so I'm just going to call this practice class one. Now, the important part is is that if you continue to use these throughout the year in the class name, um, you may want to include the year so that you don't get confused when you um, start incorporating this throughout the year. Um, and then you also have to select the grade level for that class. And I'm just going to uh, choose third grade for now. Um, and then you get to choose how the students can sign in. If your kids do not already know and have their email addresses and passwords um, that your district provides, the easiest way to do it is to have students scan a QR code. Um, and then you get taken to an area where it asks you to enter your student name. If you already have a list, um, you can click here where it says paste a list of your students and you just copy and paste them in. I'm just going to enter a few students in here. And you might want to think about how you um, enter them by name. Um, most of the time it's okay just to enter them by first name. Um, And I'm just going to add a few here so you can get the idea. And you can always go back if you you can always go back and add more students in as you need to. Now it's creating my class for me. 
and once I get in there it shows that uh, it shows my name it shows the class that I created and then it, it assigns the students um, an icon to go with their name so if I click here on manage students I can change that icon to be one that they choose um, but that's a way um, for instance, the how I allowed my daughter to choose the cow as her icon, so she always knew that she selected the cow when she uploaded images. Now I want to show you how you can go into your classes um, and um, manage different settings within the class. You can manage the name of the class, or you could change the name of the class. You could change the grade level. Um, you could also invite other teachers to your class and to have access to your class. Um, the students, you can share how the the device or how the class is shared. Um, you could share it based on class code. You could share it, um, and this says share devices. Um, you could base it on just one-to-one -one devices with the class code or if your students are older and already have email accounts you can share it out via their um, email accounts um, you could also easily add additional students right here um, and when you add the students you get to add the characters if you chose the lower grade levels so that they can easily identify who is theirs um, you can set if the students can um, like other students posts and you can set if they can or cannot comment on their other students posts um, you can if you shut this off where they can't see other people's work um, then of course they are not allowed to comment or or see any of their other students works um, this I have turned on because anything that is uploaded into Seesaw requires that I approve it first before it gets posted directly online. That's a great tool because um, that way you can make sure the right uh, students have posted the right information and have put everything in the appropriate place. Um, you can turn this on to allow students to edit their, uh, their artifacts after they have uploaded them. Um, uh, this is where you can allow parent access and if you click where it says invite parents it will give you a handout for each parent in your student's class. So each parent gets a unique uh, QR code or address to link to their account that is only specific to their students. Um, this, if I click on this, if I had sent out parent um, parents approval to to join the class this would tell me if there is any that have not accepted um, this is where you can also shut off or turn on parent likes and parent commenting as well as the sharing um, you can enable a class blog where students and you could blog on right on seesaw um, in within seesaw you can also have folders and so I created folders in order to organize the artifacts for me um, I created for for Sawyer and for the animal pictures there's animals and sounds um, art projects messages from me um, and this is where Eden was posting the work on her name and then of course reading and you could do math or any curriculum area you choose um, these options you uh, we can talk about a little bit later there are more um, advanced options and things that you can do but that is how you can organize and manage each of your classes and set separate permissions for each one if you choose this is um, the whole class list if you click here you get the calendar of events if you post something in there um, and this would be where you would see your blog if you have that turned on Thank you for watching today's Wednesday webinar. In the next Seesaw webinar, we will be covering the topics of getting students signed into your Seesaw account, what to do before inviting parents, inviting parents to join their students' Seesaw feed, and finally some frequently asked questions. So see you next time.